Today we're going to look at using multiple sensors in order to complete our input challenge. The sensors we're going to be focusing on today is a pressure sensor, a photocell, as well as a potentiometer. You will also notice in our wire diagram that we have a paper clip which is going to act like a bus. This will allow all three sensors to be attached to the paper clip and then have one wire returning back to your three volts or sending one signal back to the micro bit. Now for this challenge, what we're looking at doing is using either pressure or some sort of light or whether or not it is a mechanical turn of a knob to detect some sort of environmental change with our micro bit. So for our challenge today, what we're looking at doing is if the pressure sensor is pressed, we want to see some sort of check mark appear on the micro bit. If we turn the potentiometer fully to the right, then we should see an arrow go to the right. Again, if we see it turn to the left, we should see an arrow pointing to the left on our micro bit. And if it's dark outside, we're going to see an image of a bed. Now, to make it a little bit easier, we have a little show LED icon here of what your bed could look like on your micro bit. Now, if none of those are true, what we should see on the micro bit are those dashed lines. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we would set up our micro bit problem or our code in micro bit to get this flow chart or program to actually work. So what we're going to first need to do is go ahead and create variables. And the variables that we're going to need for this is a pressure sensor, potentiometer, and a photocell variable. Those variables are going to need to be connected to some sort of pin in order to read the environmental change. Our pressure sensor we're going to be using as a digital sensor, and that's going to be connected to pin zero. Your potentiometer is an analog sensor, and that can be connected to pin two. And then you have your photocell, which is another analog sensor, which will be connected off of pin one. Now for your pressure sensor, we're going to need to write a conditional statement, an if statement that is, in order to detect whether or not that condition is met. We're using it as a digital sensor, and again, it should be connected on your micro bit to pin zero and three volts. The outcome, if pressed for this one, is we should see an image of a check mark. For your potentiometer, we're going to need to use two else if statements. One if it's turned to the left, and another else if if it's turned to the right. This is an analog sensor, and with your potentiometer, we're going to need to go ahead and connect this to pin 2, 3 volts in ground. Remember that your middle lead on the potentiometer should go to your pin. The 3 volts in ground can be interchanged, but they do need to be connected off of the outside leads. Now, if your potentiometer is turned to the left, you're going to get a lower value. So a less than 350 value would result in an arrow pointing to the left. If it's greater than 800 or you turn your potentiometer to the right, then we should see that arrow pointing to the right. For your photo cell, we're going to be using an additional LCIV sensor. Again, it's an analog sensor, and we'll be connecting this off of pin 1 and 3 volts. If it is detecting that it is dark outside, then we should see the image of a bed. Now, what will happen if none of these are true? Then we're going to go ahead and just simply see that dashed line across the screen. So again, if your pressure sensor is not being pressed, if your potentiometer is somewhere in that middle range or it is light outside, then we should see that dashed line across the screen. So now that we have an idea of what we want our program to do, let's go ahead and jump over to make code and see how we would actually write this program. Now, once you're in make code, one of the first things you're going to want to make sure you do is go ahead and create a new file and then name it down at the bottom. Make sure you go ahead and select save so that you have this file at a later time. Now, based on our flow chart, we're going to start with a forever loop because that forever loop is going to allow our program to loop continuously forever. Now that we have the forever loop, we need to address those variables. So we're going to go to our variable drawer and we're going to create three sensors. The first one that we're going to create is our pressure sensor. Then we're going to go ahead and create another one and we can go ahead and call this potentiometer. And then we can go ahead and create the last one, which is known as the photo cell. It doesn't matter which order you go ahead and create these in, as long as they are added into make code, you will be fine. Now, once you have those three variables created, we have to initialize them or set them to read a specific pin. So we're going to go ahead and grab this set photo cell and we can simply go ahead and duplicate that two more times. 
Now we do need to go ahead and change them because we don't want all three to be photo cell. So we'll start off with our pressure sensor. Then we're going to go ahead and identify our potentiometer and then our photo cell. Now right now we're initializing those three variables to the number zero. We want to go ahead and initialize them to the pins that were identified in the flow chart. So we're going to go ahead and use our read pins. Notice you have a digital read and an analog. We're going to need one digital and you're going to need to use two analog. Now the analog sensors that we're going to be using are the potentiometer and the photo cell. The digital sensor is going to be for the pressure. So go ahead and replace the zero with your read pin blocks. The next step is to identify which pin they are connected off of. The pressure sensor should be off of digital read pin zero. My potentiometer should be off of analog read pin two. And my photo cell is off of analog read pin one. Now you can reorder these if you want them to be in order, but it doesn't really matter as long as all three of them are there before we start our conditions. Now our first condition is if the pressure sensor is being pressed. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and grab a logic block and we can bring this if statement in. We're also going to need to bring in a comparison block. And in this case, since it's digital, we can use an equal sign. So we're going to take our zero is equal to zero. And what we're going to do is replace my first zero with the variable. So here we're going to go ahead and take the pressure sensor. And what we want to know is if the pressure sensor is being pressed. In order for it to be pressed, we need to change our value to a one. Since binary says zero is off and one is on or one is being pressed, zero is not pressed. One would mean that we are pressing the pressure sensor. So if that comparison or logic statement is true, what we want to see is a check mark. So you can use a show icon and switch that heart over to a check mark. Now we can check to see if this works on our micro bit by looking at here. And if we change this to a zero to a one, we should see a check mark appear. And there's your check mark. Now notice if I change that back to a zero, it's not going to reset because we haven't actually programmed that part of it yet. The next part is what happens if the potentiometer is turned fully to the right. So we're going to need to grab another else if. And in order to do that, we're going to add the plus. That's going to give me an else statement. And then I'm going to go ahead and select another plus. That will give me an else if. So this condition will only be checked if my if condition is not true. So we're going to go ahead and grab another logic block for this one. And we'll find that comparison. And you see we have zero is less than zero, which we know cannot be true. But we're going to replace that first zero with a variable. And in this case, we're going to change that to potentiometer. Now, if we are turning this to the right, my value is going to go up. So we want to flip this to a greater than. So if the potentiometer is greater than, and the number that we're going to be using for this is 800, then something should actually occur. So if that's a correct statement, my outcome from this is going to be to display an arrow to the right. So we can do that by drawing an arrow on the LED screen, or you can simply use your show arrow, and I'm going to point this to the east. So again, if we check my condition, if I change my zero to a one, we see the check mark. And if I change pin two, to be greater than 800, then what we should see is an arrow to the right. Now, in order for my arrow to go to the left, what we need to do is add an additional else if block. Once you add that additional else if block, you can simply copy your logic statement and plug that into that bottom else if statement. So now if the potentiometer is greater than 800, we want this to be less than and our value for this is going to be 350. Now, in order for us to get the arrow to the left, we're going to switch from arrow from the east and switch that over to the west. Now we have that, we should be able to get our arrows to flip back and forth. Notice that on pin two, the value is already less than zero. So that's why we're getting our arrow. If I put my check mark or my pressure sensor to greater than zero or equal to one, we get the check mark. And again, if I put that greater than 800, I get the arrow to the right. So the next portion of this is to get that 
photocell to detect the amount of light. So let's go ahead and add an additional else if statement. For this, we want to do if it's basically going to be dark outside. So I'm going to go ahead and again duplicate my potentiometer block, but we're going to switch the potentiometer over to the photo cell. And in this case, we need to change my value. Now, if it's dark, we're going to go ahead and look at our value. Value of a photo cell is anywhere from zero to 1023. So we want to go ahead and, and kind of pick somewhere on the lower end of that. Um, let's go ahead and say if it is less than, let's put in there 400. So if your photo cell is less than 400, we want to see a bed appear. So we're going to need to go ahead and take a look at our show LEDs and we're going to go ahead and create a bed. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a couple lines here and we get some type of bed and plug that into the else if statement. Now that you have that, we should be able to test. Again, we already see the arrow to the left. If I bump that up to over 800, we now see the arrow to the right. If we change my pin zero to a one, we get the check mark. And now notice how we're not seeing that photo cell. Now there is a reason why we're not seeing that photo cell. We're gonna talk about this towards the end of the program on how we can actually get that to actually appear. So now with that, what we have to look at doing is our final else statement. What happens if none of them are true? So if my pressure sensor, potentiometer, or photo cell, neither one of them is correct, then I'm simply gonna go ahead and add a show LED, and we're just gonna go ahead and add a line across the screen and plug it in. So now let's go ahead and run through our program to make sure all of our sensors are working. What you're gonna notice is that we're always going to see this left arrow appear on our emulator. And if we take a look at this in full screen, this is a common mistake that we have to make sure we understand what is going on. Right now, my pressure sensor, which is on pin zero, is a zero. And if I change that to a one, it does show the check mark. My potentiometer, if it's less than 350, it does show the arrow to the left. And if I bump it up, it does show the arrow to the right. What we're not seeing is if it's dark. And that means that if pin one is less than 400. The reason for that is because our potentiometer is reading less than 350. If we put this somewhere in the middle, which means that now my value is reading that it's not turned to the left nor to the right, then we can go ahead and actually check our photo cell to see if it is working. Now, if we bump this up to greater than 400, none of our sensors are correct, which means now we would see the end result. So this is how you can use multiple sensors, whether it be analog or digital, to program your microbit.